I know it's been an exciting service to see the child dedication and to see um, um, the, 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 the footsteps graduation course. Amazing. And, and if we close the service at this point, we will still go back home inspired and refreshed. Uh, but I'd like to share something with us. I'd like to drop a thought with us. And I'd like to pray with us. Because I understand that there are some people here who still need a touch of God this morning. There are people who came this morning really expecting to hear a word from the Lord. And if the, if the worship, tremendous worship, hasn't touched your heart or words spoken hasn't touched your heart, this might be your moment. But if, if, if things have been happening in your life already and you feel like, woo, I've received the touch of God, then you're ready for an overdose. So it's going to be good anyhow in the next couple of minutes. If you give me your attention and give me your ears, I want to say a word to you. And what I want to talk about today is about strength, enduring strength or sustaining strength that we receive from God that keeps us on until the miracle arrives, until the expectation arrives. So many times between the planning and the execution and the, and the completion of a dream, of a project, of an idea, you could be tested, you could be tried, you could be stretched, and you could be pressed. And life is always full of such uh, um, uh, processes where you believe God for something or you're praying for something. And between the time where you pray and when that prayer is answered, there's a stretching period. There's a time when you're tested. And uh, I sense in my heart that there are some of us this morning, you are at the point where things, you say things like, Lord, how much can I take? How much of this can I take? You are at the place where you're saying in your heart, you may not have voiced it out, but it comes to your mind, Lord, I can't take this anymore. Or, Lord, when are you going to do it? Or, I, I know that pastor has said that it's going to be okay, but it doesn't look like it's going to be okay. How long do I have to wait for it to become okay? And, and I want to say to you that there is no quick fix answer. And many times, uh, God doesn't come in zap like um, we will want him to do, and in the, in the twinkling of an eye or in a split second, just wish the problem away. But sometimes he gives us his strength to keep us moving on and to keep, us, keep on holding on until the expectation comes. And I just remember um, Jesus Christ when he was going to the cross to die for every one of us and to shed his blood for every one of us so that we can be saved. And he got to this point called the Garden of Gethsemane. And in that garden, he went to pray and he, told, he had told his disciples, I'm, 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 I'm so feeling heavy in my heart. And I just need time away to sort this thing out. And he looked for a quiet place, a place where he was alone with God. And he prayed and he said, Lord, I, I know that I came for a good reason. I know I came for a good cause. I know I came so I can die and people that will believe hereafter will be saved and their sins will be forgiven. It's a good thing, but I don't know if I can carry this through. If you want, take it away. And, and, and God, of course, did not take it away. But we were told that an angel appeared from heaven and gave him strength. Strength to carry on. Strength to finish the work. Strength to complete the project. And some of us are in that place where we need strength to complete the project. Strength to carry on. Strength to see this prayer true. To see this dream true. As a church, we're in a place where God has increased us. But because of that increase, it comes increase always comes with its own pressures as well. And we're believing God for a greater increase. And we are being stretched. And sometimes we want to take a step backward. But strength always comes to say, keep moving on. 
Anybody feels like that in your heart? You feel like you need that strength to just keep moving on. To say, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to get to the goal that I've set for myself. And so that's what I want to talk about today, which is receiving sustaining strength. Strength that can help you to the next point of your objective. I'm not saying this morning that you will wake up on a Monday morning and your problems will have gone. And the tax man will no longer come after you. And the creditor will no longer look for you. But I'm saying that God will give you strength to stand in the face of challenges. Strength to stand in the face of the difficulty. I'm not saying that your teenage girl or your teenage boy that has run away from home is suddenly going to show up in the morning tomorrow. God can make that happen. But I'm saying that you're going to wake up in the morning and you will feel a sense of positivity and believe God that one day your son, your daughter, your brother, your husband, your wife, whoever it is, your loved one that is lost will come back home. Because all things are possible. Somebody said impossibility is nothing. It's, it only exists because you haven't given it a try. And listen, if you never believe God for something, you don't know what he can do. Our God is an amazing God. He's a great God. He's a great God. And Paul the apostle was praying for the church in Colossae. And I just want to share with us. That's that place where he prayed for them in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 11. This was the key point of his prayer. Colossians chapter 1 verse 11. He prayed for them to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now that looks a bit tedious. So I looked for another translation. In, in the Good News Translation says, May you be made strong with all the strength. Does it feel like you need all the strength you can ever get? With all the strength which comes from his glorious power. Now, what will that power do so that you may be able to endure everything with patience? Sometimes we've got a warped idea of what power is. Many times we think power is just to come in and liberate us or set us free. Sometimes power just comes to sustain you. Power just comes. The actual translation of the word power is the word strength. It's strength to sustain you. Strength to keep you going on. Strength to ride out the storm. Strength to wait until morning comes. And when that strength comes... Three things that strength brings along with it. Number one is it brings hope. When God's strength comes to you in your challenge, in your situation, it comes with hope. What is hope? Hope is a healthy expectation of that which is good. It's an expectation. Every time the darkness closes in, you always expect light. You always expect something positive. And, and this morning, while Pastor Paul was sharing with us and asking us to speak positive words, you may have been there thinking, how can I speak positive words? The whole earth is caving under me. I'm going into the abyss, and, and I seem to be sliding down. Uh, how can I speak positive words? Listen to me. There's something about hoping against hope. There's something about believing when there's nothing to hold on to. There's something about walking in the darkness when you can see one meter ahead. There's something about keep pushing on and believing that while there is hope, you can still make something happen out of that situation. Anybody on the train, on the hope train? And that hope leads you to the place of faith. Hope says something can happen, but faith says if you believe something can happen, do something. Faith is not sitting down idly. Faith is not wishy washy thinking, having a dream and sitting down. <laughs> if you want to see the dream true, you must wake up every morning with a sense of what do I need to do today. Every time you fail, wake up and tell yourself, I've got to try another, another way. That way doesn't work. That system doesn't work. 
and, and faith is corresponding actions relevant to your expectation. You've been looking for a job for three years. That's enough reason to sit down home and flip the skybox on and watch from morning till night and give yourself a good excuse that I've tried for three years and no job. So I better sit down here and do nothing. Listen, if you sit down, you never achieve your dream. If you sit down, you never get to the place of your destiny. If you sit down, you never arrive there. People who make things happen never sit down. Down. They are always on the go. You hit one closed door, check for another door. You hit that closed door, check for another door. You hit one closed door, check for another door. Keep checking. One door will open for you and it will open big and wide. And I tell you, when you walk that way and you live that way, you come to the, to the third point, the place of joy. What is joy? It's an attitude. Happiness is a feeling. Joy is an attitude. Happiness is, dis, dis, is determined by what happens around you. Joy is determined by what happens inside you. You are seeing things other people cannot see. And you have that expectation. And you've got that faith. So it creates an attitude. A positive attitude. A vibrant attitude. A goal-getter attitude. And people see you every morning. And they greet you. Good morning, Mr. Smith. And you are all smiling. Good morning. It's a great day. What's going on? You are not speaking irrespective of your situation. You are speaking irrespective of your situation. Joy is an attitude when you are in high altitude. You know the higher you go, the more pressure you have, you have got to face. As you keep climbing higher, you keep going higher, you keep going higher, you keep facing more pressure. And that's why when a plane is taken off, it's, it's fighting pressure. It's fighting a lot of pressure. So it's, 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 it's got to battle the pressure and, and, and attain the, the level and the height required for it to sustain a long flight. And that's why if you're going nearby, you don't need to go high. But if you are traveling intercontinental, you need to attain higher height. Listen, some of you are facing a lot of pressure because your destination is still far ahead. Your goal is big. Your dream is big. The greater dream you have, the greater the pressure against you. So don't back off. Come on, church. Don't back off. Tell yourself, I can make it. Tell yourself, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And I just want to leave you with a scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. And Paul was, was drawing to a conclusion in his letter to the book, uh, uh, in, uh, to, the, to the church in Ephesus. And, and he said this in conclusion. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong. So I tell you, if you listen to me today, be strong. Not in yourself. But be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Now, I think that's where, that's where there is a caveat. Until you are in union with Jesus Christ, you never know what his strength is like. So you've got to know him. And if you're here this morning, you've, you don't know what, what Jesus looks like. You don't know who he is. You don't understand anything about him. You can ask him in your heart and say, Jesus, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you represent. But help me to know you. For in your union with him, when you get to know him, he gives you strength. And Paul continued. He said, draw your strength from him. Anybody need strength this morning? We can draw that from him. And in a minute, I just want us to pray. But before we pray, I want you to be determined in your mind. Pastor Paul used to talk about the gray matter. It's as, it's as important as the red matter. Your heart, your mind must be determined. 
I'm not going to stay a failure. I'm not going to stay a loser. I'm going to keep punching those doors until it opens. Whatever God has promised me, he will bring it to pass. God said to us, we will win this land. We will win this land. It doesn't matter how long it takes. We will win the land. Whatever God has promised us, it will come to pass. Our young people will serve the Lord. Our schools will serve the Lord. Our universities will serve the Lord. Our cities will serve the Lord. Our towns will serve the Lord. People will know the Lord. Marriages will be restored and healed. Homes will be restored and healed. Teenagers will be filled with the Holy Spirit because he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Everyone will know the Lord is going to come to pass. Are we going to believe it? Are we going to stand our ground and look forward to seeing it? Yes, we will. In our lives, individually and collectively as a church, I just like us to pray.